Uh, welcome, friends, to this lunch party here we are having <laughs> to celebrate our getting together at a place which I hope will become a center of spiritual activities in the several years to come, several decades to come. When the great master, Baba Sawan Singh, decided that there should be a place where we can meet frequently, he was looking at a place where his own master had decided to build a small hut. His own master, Baba Jamal Singh, was walking along the river Bias in India, in Punjab state, when he found a mad fellow waving his arms and saying, this is it, this will be a big town. And Baba Jamal Singh stopped there and said, this is going to be the place. Later on, the great master Baba Sawan Singh, in order to make a tribute to his own master, set up a dera there, a conference center, a place for people to come and stay and meet and have spiritual activities and called it Dera Baba Jamal Singh, named after his own master. Many years ago, I was traveling here with some friends of mine. And we noticed that there's an Ojibwa River, which the French called Chippewa River, flowing just next here. And when we reached here and walked down to the river, one of the mad fellows with us began to wave his arms and said, this is it. I said, this is it. <laughs> and that's why we are here today. I also want to pay tribute to my master, Baba Sawan Singh. And that is why I said, if we have a conference center here, I will dedicate it to my master and call it Dera Baba Sawan Singh. And that was my dream. And you have come here to fulfill my dream. I am most grateful to you. Thank you very much. I see that a lot of work has already been done. And we have been the ability to park so many cars here. There was no such place here when we started. And we have the opportunity to set up a dome here. And this is part one of the plan to have a conference center of a smaller size here where we can meet frequently. In Great Master's time, the first place he built to have the meetings could only accommodate 50 people sitting on the floor. It was a very small room. It became short for the people who were coming very soon. And therefore, it was turned into a library. And then he had to make a little bigger place. After that, the bigger place became too short. So he had to make a still bigger place. So eventually, before he died, he built up what uh, was what is today called the Satsangar in the Dera Baba Jamal Singh near Amritsar. And that has a design and building with some minarets and some nice pattern of that building. And he was afraid that if he makes a good building, people might start worshipping the building. A danger that has always existed because people will say this is a temple. A god in human form like Baba Sawan Singh lived here, discoursed here. So that danger was there. But he said, we can't help it. This has happened in history several times. I went to the Dera some time back and I found people are saying, this is such Khand, our true home. And that the different minarets that were made on the sides that there are five levels of them. They represent the physical, astral, causal, spiritual levels. And if you can go to the top, you reach such Khand. Don't have to meditate. Go to the building. So, great master's words were right, that we start worshipping outside things, even when the message is for something inside. 
they have now locked up that. You can't reach such khand by such easy means. <laughs> now you have to meditate. So we have decided to make something on a different pattern here. And one of the patterns used in a long time back, in the time of Buddha, Gautam Buddha, was to make a dome structure. And several domes were made during his time for worship to take place, because dome was considered to be a symbol of the human head. The human head is also a dome. They would make a dome outside to represent the human head. And they said, that's the right place to meditate in. There are a few domes of, the, of that old time still existing in India, in Madhya Pradesh and some states. And I've gone there and people say, that's the dome where you can reach your true home, get nirvana. So the problem is even with the dome, even if it's a symbolic thing. We're making a dome here so that we can have our conferences. And the place which was designed in Baba Savan Singh's time for regular discourses, bandaras. Bandara was the day when great master's master, Baba Jamal Singh, passed away on 29th of December. Every 29th of December, they would have a bandara. The great master passed away on 2nd of April, 1948. 2nd of April became for us the day of bandara. We call it bandara because we do not believe any human being actually dies when he leaves his physical body. He just moves into a different state which is already there. In the case of a master, we don't even believe he dies even in, even in a physical appearance what we have seen because he manifests himself in us, in our meditation. And for us, he is more alive. When he is alive in his physical form, we have a chance to see him. And therefore, we do not really make that kind of effort or get that kind of grace to get his immediate radiant form inside because we can see him outside. But when he passes away physically, he makes it certain that we get his radiant form as quickly as we can and then we find he's not gone anywhere, he's still alive. So that is why we never feel that a master has gone away. We say he's now with us even more and that is why we celebrate it. Otherwise, why would one celebrate the death of a person? So we are not celebrating his death, we are celebrating the fact that he is more accessible to us now, though he has gone in his physical body, he is more accessible in his radiant astral form. And that is why we call it a bandara, celebration of bandar. Bandar means abundance. It's a celebration of abundance, abundance of grace. Also, as it happened, because a large number of people happened to be together, when you celebrate the abundance of grace, there is also abundance of food. <laughs> and a lot of people have now started thinking the Bandara is celebration of food. I came to this country in 1962 and happened to attend a Bandara. And then I, they were telling me, we have had some great Bandaras in the past. Food was great. What was the definition of a great bandara? Food was great. So I realized their abundance of food is being celebrated. And the recognition of the grace that is flowing was missing. Grace of a master flows all the time. Like shower of rain. All the time. Why don't we feel it? If grace is flowing all the time, why don't we feel it? It's just like the shower of rain and you have a cup in your hand and you turn it upside down, it will never get filled up. No matter how much it rains, the cup remains empty. If you turn a little bit, a few drops may go in. It's only when you turn the cup straight, in seconds it gets filled up. The same thing is true of the grace of a master. The cup here is the cup of our own attention. When the attention is all outward, it's like turning the cup downwards. When we put our attention toward the master, it starts filling up. If our whole attention is there, it gets filled up in no time. Grace is always flowing. It's our attention that is not turned in the right direction. And the more we can turn our attention in the right direction, the sooner we can experience the grace of the master. So that is why we are 
missing the real thing when we put all the attention on outside things. We value the outside body of the master. We value even his belongings. We value his shoes. We value his uh, uh, utensils he used. In fact, there was a silver cup the great master used. I saw him drinking his water and sometimes his milk in that silver cup. It was an old silver cup. It became old by use. But we all saw him using it. After he passed away, the silver cup passed on to a lady who was taking care of him. Her name was Bibi Lajo. And Bibi Lajo had that cup. And one day, I was in the United States. She sent an urgent message through my sister in New Delhi. Please inform. I have a very important message for each one. So I said, what's the message? The message was that great masters appeared in her meditation and told her, give the cup to Ishwa. I was surprised and also very excited that I am able to get that cup. So I said, I will be coming to India, New Delhi, and I will pick up the cup. I went and brought the cup with me. Cup is very treasure, big treasure for me. I Every time I think of the cup, I remember all the 40 years that great master used it. And all the time I could see him. It's such a great prashad of his that I can remember him all the time. I brought the cup here. And we used to have meetings in Wisconsin, but not in this area, but in Mequon on the other side, near the Lake Michigan. And I decided to show off. I have a cup. <laughs> I still sometimes feel my ego hasn't disappeared much. <laughs> but I try to show off. So I brought the cup. And some people still have a picture of my holding the cup on my head. <laughs> to show off how important it is to me. I said I am willing to give up all the wealth and everything of my life. Not this cup. So more show offing. And one lady was there. Name was Mary Winter. After the program she came to me. She said. This cup must be something very rare. Can I touch it? I said, I don't let anybody touch my cup. <laughs> Again, too much possessiveness, you know. I don't let anybody touch. But she was my host. Several times I came, stayed with her in West Bend, Wisconsin. So I said, okay, only touch it for one second. <laughs> and I had the cup. And when she touched it, she said, oh. <laughs> I said, what happened? She said, there's too much energy in this cup. I held the cup, nothing happened to me. <laughs> then afterward, I said, maybe it was in your own mind that you felt the cup had that energy or power because I'm holding it. I am only remembering that master. I'm not having that kind of experience you had. She said, maybe it was my own mind. Can I touch it again? I said, okay, one second. She touched it again. Ooh. I took the cup and locked up in a safe. <laughs> I said, I don't know who, how many people can see the energy in the cup. I better hide it somewhere. I also felt that this was not the purpose of having the cup to show off about it. I have a pair of shoes belonging to the great master. Old shoes, which he did not use. Some of us were privileged to get hold of them. I have one pair. And I brought it. And one friend of mine who was in Connecticut, he said, I want to see your shoes. I said, I don't show them anymore. After the cup experience, I am going to hide the shoes. They are also locked up now. But I took him to India, and he wanted to meet some really old, beloved satsangis of great master's time. As it happened, Dr. Ishar Singh, that veterinary doctor about whom I tell stories, how he had to break his arm to get initiated, how he tied up his father to bring him to the great master, Ishar Singh was still alive. 
and I said, I can introduce him to one of my best friends who is a model for me as a satsangi. His love and devotion, I cannot match. So I can show you that man. And Isha Singh had just recently retired from his job as a veterinary doctor, animal husbandry doctor in the state of Kapurthala. And he was living in a small hut, small home. I took this friend of mine, whose name was Roy Kaur. I took Roy to Isha Singh's house. And I told Roy, Isha Singh also has a pair of shoes. He says, I would like to see them. So I told Dr. Isha Singh, I said, this is a friend of mine from America. And he knows now I've told him, you have a pair of shoes of great master. And he would like to see them. So Isha Singh opened up his cupboard and said, here are the shoes. On seeing them, tears came into the eyes of Roy. And he went and put his head on those shoes. And Isha Singh was watching and tears came into his eyes. He said to me, this man comes from another country. They have no respect for shoes in that country. Who is crying? with so much emotion on seeing my master's shoes. I am so touched. I want to do something for this man. What can I do? I said, give him a lunch. <laughs> or give him a pizza if you have one. <laughs> he said no. When he retired, the Maharaja of Kapurthala, the ruler of Kapurthala state, who used to wear a gold, his gold thread, one of the gowns that he had, the most expensive gown that the Maharaja had, he had given to Isha Singh as a retirement gift. Isha Singh took that gown out and said, this is the minimum I can give to this man. And he gave to Roy Kaur that gown. He said, you have respected the shoes of my master. This is the minimum I can do. I don't have much, but this is what I can give. So he called, put it in and said, I look like a Maharaja. <laughs> <laughs> and he brought it with him to America. The point I'm making is that we value something that belongs to the master. But when I find that we start worshipping it, that's a danger. We start worshipping buildings, we start worshipping shoes, start worshipping only utensils. They are material things. Why they are valuable is because of the association we have with those things. And that is why I learned a lesson to hide them and only tell you stories about them, <laughs> which I'm doing now. I'm very happy that you are sitting at a location which I believe will be a center of great spiritual activity in the several decades to come. And I'm happy that I had a little hand in the contribution to this tribute my master Baba Savan Singh. After the conference center is ready, I'll be coming here to dedicate it to my master. And from that day, we'll call it Dera Baba Savan Singh. Right now, it's just a conference center in under construction. So that is why I'm very happy that you all came here and joined me. And I am very happy you invited me also to participate in a special lunch. It's nice to have a party sometimes. Rain is like a shower of grace upon us. It's a good symbol. We used to say when rain comes, it's bringing the grace of the master. And when the meeting used to be held, the rain used to stop. So we have a nice tent here so we can have this meeting and our lunch without getting wet. So thank you very much. Enjoy the lunch. And my best wishes, great master blessings to all of you.